In this video, I'm going to be releasing the updated version of the do-it-yourself investor toolkit. I'll be going over all of the new features and taking you step by step on exactly how this spreadsheet works. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet or any of my other spreadsheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But let's go ahead and start going over some of these updates. First, to start off, of course, this is the investment dashboard. This is the dividend dashboard. We have a dividend calendar, a daily dividend calendar, a place to track our stocks, a place to track our crypto, and now we have a place to track our sold positions as well. If we come over just a little bit further, of course, we have a stock watch list, a place to track our dividend portfolio, some portfolio projections, our cost of living, and our live off of dividend analysis. And if you've never seen this spreadsheet a lot, I know this looks like a lot, but I promise it's very simple to use. Much of this process is completely automated. So let's go ahead and start with the stocks tab. Let me show you how this works. Basically, everything is going to be derived from this tab, and it's very simple to use. You can see a lot of data here, I know. We have things like market value, gain loss, gain loss as a percent, and our yearly dividend income listed here. But all we need to do to get this data is plug in the stock we bought right here. Say I bought Apple, I'll plug in AAPL. We can say I bought 10 shares at a purchase price of $150. I'll hit enter and you can see all of this data right here is going to automatically load in. So if I jump back over to my investment dashboard, I'll zoom in in just a second, but you can see Apple's now listed right here. We can see the growth. We can see our cost and market value. It's taken into account on this chart right here, this chart here. So again, like I mentioned, everything updates automatically. It's a fairly simple process, but let me go ahead and go over some of the new features now. So if I zoom in, one of the things you'll notice here that's different from the last version of my spreadsheet is again, right here, we have our realized gains and this is going to be derived from our sold positions tab so basically everything here is derived from our stocks tab and our dividend portfolio recording but right here you can see our sold position so I plugged in some example data here it says I sold Apple I sold coca-cola a couple of other positions as well but I basically just plugged in the amount I sold my original purchase price and my sell price and based off of this we can basically get all the data that we need um, to derive our overall realized gains, I think this is something we should definitely be taking into account when looking at our overall portfolio, which is why I added it. So it's going to give us a more accurate representation of our overall actual returns. So for the investment dashboard, that's really the only big addition. Again, I'll come back and show more how this works in just a little bit, but I want to show some of the other new features as well. If we jump over to our dividend dashboard, it looks pretty similar to the last version, except for we have a new chart right here, which is the projected annual dividend income. This is a chart that I'm really excited to add. I think it's gonna be a really cool metric to see grow over time and to track over time. So this is a little bit different than the historical monthly dividend income. One of the things about historical monthly dividend income is you can see it fluctuates month to month, but overall it should be trending up. Your projected annual dividend income though, as long as you continue to reinvest dividends and buy shares of dividend growth companies, this should always continue to increase over time and month after month. So for example, we can see right here in September of 2022, our projected annual dividend income sitting at around 1345. Next month, it was around 1498. Month after that, around 1678. And it continued to increase. And if we look at this most recent data point, you can see it was $2,700 and 54 cents. So what that means is if I didn't buy any more shares of any stock, over the next year, I could expect to receive around $2,754 in annual dividend income. So again, I think this is a really cool chart to have. And here's where this data is derived from. If we jump back over to our dividend portfolio recording tab, other than our stocks tab, plugging in that data, this is really the only place you need to plug in data. You have our dividend payments here, portfolio value here, but we also have a place to plug in our projected annual dividend income. So for example, let's say it's the beginning of June. One of the things you would look at is right here, you could see your expected yearly dividend income, 2,746. What I could do is I could go to my dividend portfolio recording tab. I'll plug in June 23, and you could say, once you looked at it, you realize you're going to make $2,800 in annual dividend income. I could plug that in here. You can now see this new data point is showing June 23, $2,800. So again, you probably just want to derive that from whatever your expected yearly dividend income is at the time that you're tracking that data. So again, a new chart that I think is really important, and I think it's going to be fairly easy to track on a monthly basis. Again, all you have to do is plug in this data right here. So those are the two new additions 
to this investment dashboard. Again, there's a couple of other things I wanna add moving forward, but I wanna go ahead and release this new version. So from here on out, I am gonna be going step by step on how all these features work. So I'll give you a complete tutorial on this spreadsheet right now. Again, we're currently looking at the investment dashboard. We already saw some of the metrics you can see right here. Again, all this is derived from our stocks tab and the data that we plug in right here. It's an extremely easy process. You can see here we have our stock allocation. Again, it's all derived from what we plug into our stocks. We have a cost to market value chart, a growth chart, again, all derived from our stocks tab. We have our total holdings. We have some notes, stock allocation by industry, and then we have a total win amount and a total loss amount. All of those things that I just mentioned are again, derived from our stocks tab right here. Now, the only thing that isn't is our future portfolio outlook. I'll zoom in just a little bit and scroll down and you can see what we're looking at right here. We can toggle between reinvesting dividends and not reinvesting dividends, and you can see the data will update accordingly. But this is basically a way to see what our portfolio will look like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or even 35 years from now. We can see our expected yearly dividend income, our total dividend income, and our portfolio value over those time periods. Now, the data here is not derived from our stocks tab. It is actually derived from our portfolio projection tab. Basically what I've done here is I've modeled out 30 years of performance based on the projections we plug in right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna plug in your starting portfolio size. So I put in example data again here, I plugged in 79,000, and then I'm assuming a price growth rate of 7%, dividend growth rate of 7%. Both of these are fairly conservative projections overall when you consider the fact that dividend ETFs like SCHD have seen price growth rate appreciation of around 11% over the past decade and dividend growth rate of around 12%. But nonetheless, you can see I'm now plugging in my monthly contribution of $2,500. Here, you can choose between monthly and lump sum. Again, we're going with $2,500 a month. And then you plug in your starting dividend yield for your portfolio. Mine's sitting at about 3.5% in this example. And based off all this data here, we are able to derive our future portfolio outlook tab. Now, not only is that derived from our portfolio projections tab, if we also plug in our cost of living, I'll zoom out just a little bit, you can see you can plug in your monthly cost of living, your expected inflation rate, and now you'll get your monthly cost of living. And once you've done both of those things, you can do what I call a live off of dividends analysis. This is basically um, an analysis that's gonna show you how long it takes for you to live off of dividend income. We have a quick chart to visualize it over here. The red line is our monthly dividend payments and the black line is our cost of living. Once the red line surpasses the black line, that's the point at which we'll be able to live off of dividend payments. And it's broken out over here. I'll zoom in just a little bit so we can see this example. But if we start scrolling down, you can see at 10 years, we can't live off dividends, 15, we still can't. But it looks like in this example, at year 18, just a few months in, we would be able to live off of dividend payments because our monthly dividend surpasses our monthly cost of living. You can see how much your monthly contributions were right here, the total contributions you made, the total amount you made in dividends during that time period, and what your account value would look like. So this is gonna give you a much more in-depth breakdown of how long it will take you to live off of dividends. One of the cool things I really like to do is kind of mess with the portfolio projections to see how it changes our live off of dividends analysis. So again, I think this is an extremely powerful tool that I've built into this spreadsheet that I'm pretty excited to to take advantage of and continue using. Now, the next one we'll look at, if we come over to the left, is our dividend dashboard. And again, we did look at this a little bit already. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. But basically, we can see things like our expected yearly dividend income, our all-time dividend income, our average monthly dividends, and our current portfolio dividend yield. And again, most of this data is pulled from the stocks tab, but some of it is also pulled from our dividend slash portfolio recording tab. And this is one of the things you do need to plug into your spreadsheet for all of the data to properly update, but it's a pretty quick process. Basically, all you need to do is plug in your monthly dividend payment. So if, once I scroll down, we'll say once the month of May is over and I wanna plug in my dividends for June, all I have to do is plug in June 23 right here, the stocks that pay me dividends, how much they paid out in dividends, and the date at which they paid me dividends, because that'll give us some data for one of my tabs later on. But then once you come up here, you just need to plug in your portfolio value for June and your projected annual dividend income. So let's go ahead and plug in some example data to see exactly how this works. I'll plug in June 23 right here. We can just copy and paste a couple. And let's just say that Apple paid me dividends We'll say they paid $5 on June 1st, 23. We can plug in another example. Let's say SCHD paid me dividends. We can see they play, paid me 100 dividends on June 10th. 
And let's plug in one more example. Let's say Coca-Cola paid me dividends in the month of June. We can say $50 on June 20th, 23. I'll hit enter. I'll scroll up. We'll say my portfolio value as of June was, we can say it'll be $75,000 in this example. And then our projected annual dividend income, like we already talked about, we can say June 23, let's say it was $2,850. I'll hit enter. So it's really as simple as that. Now, when we jump back over to our dividend dashboard, you'll see some of this data has automatically updated. Our portfolio value over time chart has updated. Our historical monthly dividend income chart has updated. And of course, our projected annual dividend income has updated as well. And of course, if we plug in new stocks, or dividends that we received, this will update. We can also see our dividend income by industry. I think this is a very important chart to track because you don't wanna be receiving all your dividend income from one industry because that's providing unnecessary risk for your portfolio. We also have a chart to see our dividend yield on cost. So we can see which of our positions has the largest dividend yield, which has the lowest. And then of course I have a chart to see my dividend income by each individual stock. This is basically a way to see how much each stock is projected to pay you over a year in dividend income. So I think there's a lot of great metrics that we're currently tracking on our dividend dashboard. Again, I'm excited to add the projected annual dividend income. I think that's gonna provide some good value. Now, two other things that I wanna look at as well. We have a dividend calendar and a daily dividend calendar. Let's go ahead and start with our dividend calendar. This is a really important way to be tracking your dividend portfolio for a multitude of reasons because you can see each month how much you've received in dividend income, how much you've received from each position, but more importantly, you can see how your dividend payments will grow over time. So let me show you a quick example. We'll look at Realty Income. This is a monthly dividend company that typically increases the amount they pay in dividends every single quarter. So when you consider the fact we're reinvesting dividends and this company is also increasing the amount they pay in dividends, you'll see, especially when you buy more of the company, the amount they pay in dividends will change and increase month after month. So again, a great way to see how your dividend payments are increasing. So for example, in January of 2022, I received a $5.83 dividend payment, but the next month it increased, the next month it increased, and the next month it increased. If we zoom all the way forward to our current date, you can see those dividend increases have continued over that time period, and it's all the way up to $17.97. So again, really cool to see how those dividend payments increase over time when you buy companies that increase the amount they pay in dividends, and you also reinvest dividends. Now, if I zoom out just a little bit, one of the things you'll see is we have June 23 data right here, a $50 payment. Now, if you remember, we just plugged in that dividend payment for Coca-Cola. So you can see that data is now showing up on our dividend calendar. So again, the dividend calendar is pretty much completely automated. You just need to plug in what companies you receive dividend payments from. Here's our $100 dividend payment and our $5 dividend payment from SCHD and Apple. So again, this data is derived from our dividend portfolio recording tab. It all fills in automatically once you plug that in. What else fills in automatically is our daily dividend calendar. You can see basically what days you were paid dividends and how much you pay were paid on each individual day. It's also gonna tell you what your highest day of the year was. So you can see my 2022 daily dividend calendar right here with the example data. We can see what days we received dividend, what my highest day was. We can see the same thing for 2023. So for example, that $100 dividend payment that I just plugged in would have been my highest dividend payment. And you can see I received it on June 10th. So again, just a really cool way to see exactly what days you receive dividend payments. Now we already talked about the stock tab. This is a very automated tab. It makes it really easy to track your positions. We also have a crypto tab. Like I mentioned, we have a tab to track our sold positions. This will help with our investment dashboard. And then we have a stock watch list. I'll talk about this for just a moment, but this is just a pretty cool feature that I once added. Let's say that I wanna add Coca-Cola to my stock watch list. All I need to do is plug in KO right here and hit enter. You can see this data will automatically load in. If you wanna look at something other than a 365 day change, all you need to do is plug it in here. Let's say I wanna look at a 500 day change. I'll hit enter and you can see these charts will automatically update. We have some metrics I'm tracking here that I would personally wanna see for a stock watch list but I also have a place to plug in our intrinsic value. So for example, let's say I did a stock analysis on Coca-Cola and I thought their intrinsic value was around $65 per share. I'll hit enter. And then right here for all of your positions, you can plug in your margin of safety. Let's say we decided on a 10% margin of safety. I'll hit enter and based upon our intrinsic value, 
and our margins of safety, it will give you an acceptable buy price and also give you a signal as to whether it's within your acceptable buy price or not. So based on the example data and the example valuations I would have done, you could see Caterpillar and AT&T would be considered good stocks to buy at their current prices. So again, pretty cool way to keep up with your stock watch list. I've already talked about the dividend portfolio recording tab, the portfolio projections, our cost of living, again, very simple. Just plug it in here and your expected inflation rate. And based off of that, we can get our live off of dividend analysis. So there you go. That is the updated version of the do-it-yourself investor toolkit 5.0. I've put a lot of work into the spreadsheet and I think it's one of the absolute best ways to track your dividend portfolio over time. If you do become a member at my Patreon, of course, you'll receive access to all of my spreadsheets, if you become a member of the highest tier, you'll also get access to updates to new releases of the spreadsheet, which I definitely plan on releasing in the future. So there you go. That's all the new features and that's how the spreadsheet works. Go ahead and comment down below if there's any features that you'd like to see in the future. So with that being said, I hope to see you over on my Patreon page and thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.